When Honda first announced the NT1100 back in 2021, a touring bike based on its hugely successful adventure bike, well, it seemed like a no-brainer. After all, as well as being able to rip it up in the dirt, the Africa Twin is also an excellent road tourer, and both bikes now share the same chassis, engine, electronics, and more. But which is best, the adventure bike? or the touring bike. Well, we've been riding these for the past year, and today in this video, we're gonna be giving them the ABR verdict to find out. Now, before we go into any of that, I just wanna take a moment to thank our good friends at Senna who have sponsored this video. Senna is a communications brand whose headsets we have been using on our motorcycle tours for the past 10 years. And to talk to each other throughout this review, we'll be using one of its latest models, the Senna Spider ST1. Now, this is a device packed with high-end technology that you'd usually find on a more premium device, but it comes in at a very reasonable price. You've got mesh technology, you've got fantastic sound quality and more. You can find out all about the Spider ST1 through the link below this video, and we'll be letting you know how we get on with it later in the film. Okay, so Bryn, we're going to give these two bikes the ABR verdict. So I'm on the Africa Twin, you're on the NT1100. Uh, we're going to, well, we're going to see how they perform in a way that we have done on every review pretty much since ABR began, haven't we? Yeah, that's right. Um, in ABR magazine, we basically structure reviews around sort of real world use of the bike so that when we report on them, we keep it relevant to everyone's, you know, everyday life. So. The categories of the ABR verdict are we're going to be looking at these bikes as one, a commuter, two, a weekend tourer, three, a continental road tourer, uh, four, as an off-roader, and then five, as a pillion carrier. Well, we're just approaching Stratford-upon-Avon. So the perfect place to see, you know, how do these bikes perform as commuters? Are they going to make it through the morning rush or are you going to be snarled up in traffic with all the, uh, the folks in their cars? Yeah, exactly. And actually, this is pretty much the route I take on my, on my way home from work, actually. So I have first-hand knowledge on the NT1100, uh, having ridden it back and forth to work over the probably six, seven, eight months now. And uh, for me personally, and this is this probably separates touring bikes and uh, adventure bikes, is one of the first things I, I like about a touring bike, uh, particularly the NT1100 when it comes to commuting, is the very start of the ride when it comes to getting the bike out of the garage. You know, adventure bikes, like the one you're riding, are big, heavy, they're, they're lumps to move, maneuver in and out of the garage. <laughs> well, uh, uh, just holding it back there a little bit. I'm not sure off the top of my head what the NC weight is that'll flash up on the screen, unless you know it, but it's not that much lighter, is it? No, no, it's exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> but because of how much smaller and how much lower down the NT1100 is, it feels a lot more manageable when you when you are pushing it around the garage. You know, I've actually, I pushed, the, I rode the Africa Twin home a few days ago, and uh, yeah, it was noticeable the difference between the NT and the Africa Twin, just how easy it was to push around the garage, the driveway, and then to get on the thing in the morning. Get it, my driveway, I've got a couple of cars on there. It's on a slope um, and it is a bit awkward to get bikes out. And I have to admit, I do much prefer a bike that's lower, less top heavy. First thing in the morning, it's just easier to move around, isn't it? And, and the Africa Twin, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly not a, it, it's a lovely well-balanced bike when you ride, but it is a bit taller. It it does hold its weight a bit higher up um, and it is a little bit trickier to move around especially you know if you're I don't know feeling knackered or hungover <laughs> well, <laughs> well then exactly you shouldn't that. be riding but you know it, you know what know. I mean you, you made a good point about getting on the bike as well because the Africa Twin is um, is actually I think very approachable for an adventure bike it's got uh, I think an 850 millimeter to 870 millimeter seat which 
Okay, does still need some clambering on to get your leg over the back seat. Um, but once I'm on it, you know, I'm six foot just under and I've got a fair bit of leg bend spare while um, while having both feet on the floor. And that's one of the things I like the most about the Africa Tour. And something they improved um, over the years, making it a little bit shorter, making it more approachable for more riders. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So it's an 820 millimeter high seat. Um, so just swinging your leg over, it's effortless. Well, for me, it's effortless. I, and then if you're, you know, a bit less mobile than myself, I think you would still find it a lot more approachable than the uh, the Africa Twin. Um, but then moving on on a commute, so you've 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 finally wrestled the bike out of the garage. You, you've got out the drive. <laughs> you're painting a great picture of a bench. Yeah, bike you're thinking, there. why the hell am I riding to work when I could have just taken the car? <laughs> never, never. For me, again have been able to put both feet on the floor and you know i can stand up with the bike underneath me hey i'm doing the same i'm doing the same just i'm on tiptoe stood up yeah but you're on stilts. Both feet are down <laughs> yeah but it just it, well there you go plus for both bikes is it makes it so much more just easy and less faff and uh, when it comes to filtering as well the narrow pro well the narrowish profile of the nt makes it nice to to nip down through traffic and you know, I'm, I'm going to completely agree with you that because I've also ridden the NT um, for a, quite a few hundred miles, uh, if not more, over the past year. Um, and I completely agree, it's a lovely bike to commute on. But the AT, uh, to me, it does feel a little bit slimmer. I don't know if it is, I haven't measured it. But what I really like about the AT is that that nice high uh, view you get of the road ahead. So I think yes. you can see a little bit more of the traffic unfolding in front of you. And when I'm riding through kind of traffic and we've got a van in front of us like this, it does feel great to be able to see stuff or just pop up on the pegs like I am now. Nice natural seat and posi uh, standing position and have a look what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. And wait, you are saying AT, right? Africa Twin. AT, Africa Twin. Yeah, yeah sorry, an awful abbreviation. Yeah. <laughs> laziness. There's laziness yeah. in mind on my part. Yeah, you're the sort of person to call them ADV bikes, right? AD, I love the ADV bike. <laughs> no, I think, we're, I think it's safe to say that they're both good at uh, slipping through city traffic. They're not the best, don't get me wrong, especially with the luggage on. Um, you know, I had a Honda CB500X that I used to... Um, commute through London on and that thing was nice and slim nice and light uh, a much smaller bike and uh, quite frankly was a much better city commuter but if you want a bigger bike that's you know great over long distances which we'll touch on a little bit later which is also going to be good for a city commute then you know these two bikes are both pretty darn good at it oh yeah 100 percent. I you... would say if I'm commuting I'm going for the NT 1100. I hate to say it. I'm an I'm a, I'm a Africa Twin fanboy. I love this bike. But the NT makes more sense, especially because I could pack my work clothes into the luggage. I don't even spend extra. Um, I, I, it, it ticks. It ticks all the boxes. No, that's exactly it. it. It does everything you would need it to do as a commuter. And just, you know, getting on this bike and riding it is such a pleasurable experience with the engine that it's got. It just makes every commute one to enjoy. Um, also, want to touch on the fact that the uh, the CarPlay, which you hook up to, uh, which which connects to the uh, the LCD, sorry, the TFT screen in front of me, means that it's easy to listen to the radio on the way to work. You know, all the com oh. all the comforts you'd get from inside a car, you can get on your bike. Or so, you can listen to the ABR Garage podcast as you uh, as you approach the office. Or, or you could do that. Um, so, well, you can yeah, you can you can also do that on the Africa Twin. It's got the same TFT dash. <laughs> Sorry, I just love the sound of that engine. <laughs> you mentioned the NC's got a great engine. Well, the Africa Twin's got the same engine. I think they're slightly differently tuned, but oh, they're amazing. But anyway, yeah, you know, if my my sensible head's on, I'm picking the NC. How about you? NC, yeah, hundred percent. But what about these two bikes as weekend tourers? And by weekend tourer. I mean a bike that can, uh, you know, you, you finish work on a Friday night and then you've got Saturday and Sunday to play around on the roads and you're probably going to spend a bit of a, a few hours on the motorway to get to your destination and then once you're there you've got a day of riding around twisty roads just finding new things and just generally in, enjoying your riding. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about a typical weekend after work, pack up, motorway to North Wales, ride some A-roads on the way and then twisty mountain passes. You know, that's a great weekend away, isn't it? Back to the office in time for Monday morning. 
Exactly, yeah. Just uh, enjoy making making the most of your weekend on the bike you got, pretty much. So, uh, James, what do you think of the uh, the Africa Twin as a weekend tourer? I'll tell you what, I think out of all the adventure bikes around that right now, around right now, the Africa Twin is really up there in terms of versatility. Uh, so for those for those kind of like motorway schleps on a Friday night when you just want to burn miles, this thing's comfortable. Uh, it's powerful. You know, it's it's going to be great in that situation um, as long as you put on a bigger screen. I won't keep banging on about it, but this little stubby screen is no good on the motorway. Um, but the joy of the Twin for me is when you're in the twisties. Yeah, it's a big old bike with a 21 inch front wheel, but boy, it is fun to throw around. It really does below its weight like the best adventure bikes around um, and this thing is just brilliant to flick between turns and carve around in the twisties it's great fun for me it is a shoo-in as a cracking weekend tourer yeah it's hard to argue with any of what you've just said there about the africa twin because by itself because it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's all true it's all true but and by itself the africa twin is a uh, you know it's the sort of bike that makes you want to ride further and longer and although it sounds a bit uh, airy fairy but it does but the NT the NT eleven hundred kind of takes all that of the Africa Twin and just makes it a more user friendly, comfortable package. Less and exciting, you're saying? Not at all, no. Because <laughs> you, when it comes to the motorway riding, because inevitably you want to get anywhere in the UK, you're going to spend a bit of time on the motorway. When it comes to motorway riding, I'm more than happy to just stick the NT eleven hundred in cruise control and just you know let the let the miles melt away behind me because this big screen in front of me everything in front of me right now is just dead air it's so so good at protecting me from the from the oncoming wind and the hand guards are incredibly good, effective as well so it's got the motorway part covered it's got the the fun on road performance part covered it's got the luggage included so you could throw your stuff in there for a weekend away it, 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 you know, realistically, it's it's pretty much the perfect weekend tour. And, and also, one of the things I really like about the NT is that it is a it is a very capable touring bike, but it's not huge. So if you look at your likes of your I don't know your BMW RT or or even your Honda Goldwing, you know they're they're dedicated road touring bikes, brilliant machines. I've ridden both and absolutely love them, but they're big and they are heavy. Was what I love about the NT is it's a bit smaller, it's a little bit lighter, it's a bit more agile. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, thirteen, no, eleven nine 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 for the manual version, twelve nine 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 for the DCT version. What's it? The Africa Twin. What's that? The model you're riding there? It is uh, this uh, from thirteen thousand and forty nine pounds. Um, yeah, it's it's more money, um, more money for less bike. For me. <laughs> it's an emotional thing with this bike as well though and, and i think that's really important when you're buying a bike and perhaps we'll talk about more this more in the conclusion but god this africa twin pulls at my heartstrings i love it and and actually both these bikes benefit from this incredible i think it's 1089 cc engine makes 100 brake one hook brake horsepower and oh my god it sounds wonderful i'm just yeah i couldn't agree with what people in general say the anti-1100 is a bit of a boring looking bike but when you get on it and when you twist that throttle and it growls back at you, it, it, it's, it, it just makes you smile and it's an exciting bike to ride from that perspective. That's it. Despite all that, mate, I get it. I really understand your point of view. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm going with the Africa Swim. If I've got luggage on, I've got more space in that luggage. Um, I just love the way the Africa Swim looks and feels and it's a purely emotional decision. You might win on paper, but the Africa Swim wins in my heart. What do we mean by continental road tour, James? Well, I think, you know, as I, I mentioned briefly, you know, jumping on the ferry, you've got a week, couple of weeks off work, maybe more. Uh, you're heading down to the Alps, the Pyrenees, uh, Italy and beyond in Europe for us UK riders. Um, so we're thinking you're going to be covering a lot of big miles in a short amount of time to get to the fun bits, to get to the mountains, to get to the coastal areas. So, you know, you're going to need a bike that's going to be comfortable covering big miles at speed, as well as carving around twisty mountain passes. Yeah, basically the trip that we all buy our bikes for, that we do once 
Maybe if we're lucky twice a year, yeah? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's the highlight of my year. And I think a lot of people who ride bikes are adventure and touring bikes for them as well. So what are these bikes like for that sort of journey though? So don't tell me the NT1100 is going to be great. Yeah, in a word, yes, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think that's, that's largely what Honda had in mind when they were building the, the NT1100 was those sorts of trips, you know? It's got, we've just spoken about it from the, the weekend tourer perspective um, and all the, all the elements that make it great for that perspective, but that is also carried through onto the Continental Road Tourer. So the wind protection, the, the Apple CarPlay for, for navigation when you're going across the continent, uh, the, it's got heated grips, it's got luggage on the back of the loop. There's enough room for uh, weekend riding. I would definitely want the top box for a week away. Yeah, you talk about the, the luggage on the NC. Yeah, it comes as part of the package, but the reality is it's pretty small. Um, I just come back from, from 10 days in France, two up with my wife. Um, we were on actually a BMW GS with big metal luggage, loads and loads of carrying capacity, and we struggled for space. Um, we would have really struggled for space in those, uh, in those plastic panniers. 100%. So for me, even though I've got to pay extra, luggage on the uh, Africa Twin is much better, much better for long distance travel, particularly with two of you. Um, what about the uh, the tank range of the Africa Twin? Because you're on the standard Africa Twin, which has a fuel capacity of, uh, what was it? 18.8 litres. We're playing top trumps now, aren't we? <laughs> Your, yours, is, yours is bigger than mine, so it's My better. Mine is bigger than yours. It's 20.1 <laughs> litres, I believe. It's either 20.1 or 20.2. Uh, yeah. But I can get about 250 miles uh, out of a tank. With the Africa Twin, it's slightly less. Um, if you were to, however, get the Africa Twin Adventure Sports, you, you're looking at a 24 litre tank. So depends which, which Africa Twin you're getting for, for long distance touring. Ironically, the, the off-road focused one has a bigger tank, making it better for off, for longer distance touring. You know, if you look at the stats, yeah, you're going to get further on the NT. In reality, though, like 18.8 litres, you know, it's going to get you a couple of hundred miles between fill-ups. It's enough for touring. Would I like more? Yeah, 100%. But it's certainly not something that would put me off the Africa Twin. Um, and I have to admit, one thing that I absolutely adore about the Africa Swim is this riding position. Now I've waited until now to talk about it uh, because we're talking about spending long days in the saddle but boy this feet hand size back triangle I think it might be one of the best in adventure biking. It's so roomy and so comfortable. Um, so yeah the seating position is actually something that was that's different between the NT1100 and the Africa Twin. Um, Honda says that they've adjusted it so you're 10 degrees further forward on the NT1100 and you definitely feel that the bars are lower down and you're, you're more leant forward and there's not a huge amount of pressure through the wrists but there's definitely more through the wrists than there is on the Africa Twin and if I was to, you know, if I owned an NT1100 I would look at getting the bars raised to put it more into that Africa Twin seating position because I agree on uh, long distance rides that perfect upright seating position of the Africa Twin and the, the nice yeah. feet arse hands triangle is, is pretty much Perfect, and that translates into the standing position as well. Yeah, and do you think um, that seat position is kind of? It, it's one of the reasons why the NC1100 seems to be having a bit of a uh, identity crisis, because you'll see it described as a, as a sports tourer all over the internet, um, and they've given it a slightly, slightly more forward stance. But to me, that is hands down a touring bike. There's nothing sporty about it. It's a touring bike. It's not. It's not a sports tourer. If we're talking about it from a continental uh, tourer point of view, you know, when on the motorway you'll, you'll be great and that. But once you get to the twisty roads, the mountain roads, if you're really gunning it, you're pushing the limits of the suspension as you're going around corners fast and pushing it hard. And uh, yeah, you you felt it, haven't you, dudes? Yeah, I do. And you know what? That's that's one. I, I've been very positive about both bikes um, as we've been talking. But that is one thing that the Africa Twin does does suffer from as well, which is a hell of a lot of fork dive. Now, I think it's forgivable in an adventure bike because you know, you're know you paying for that extra suspension travel um, so that it performs off-road when you're kind of you know hitting rocky steps and, and so forth. But it does, you know, if you push the bike hard, you do feel, you do feel like 
the suspension could be tighter, it could be firmer. Now, again, it's a compromise I'm always willing to make with an adventure bike. I'll be honest with you, it's not a compromise I'm particularly happy with, with a, a, a dedicated road bike. No, and uh, you know, that, that leads us on to another area taking the engine out of the africa twin and putting it in the nt 1100 you know it's a, the, it, the twin is beautiful twin but it is it is it chugs along and you can really feel it through the handlebars and the foot pegs it's not enough to give me uh numb fingers or numb hands or numb feet but it's there there's a vibration there comparing it to a four-cylinder bike it's really noticeable Move, moving on to something else which i think brings both bikes into a league of their own currently uh, as long distance tourers or as touring bikes in general is uh, the inclusion of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on the, ah. uh, the, T the TFT dash in front of you. Your favourite? I, do you know what, I'm not, I've not got it running at the moment but it is so good. You do need, like you said, a phone, you need the cable to plug your phone in and handily you need a headset, a, 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 an intercom, a Bluetooth headset. Uh, or mesh, which we're using right now, which is the Senna ST1. And the Senna Spider ST1. Oh, mate, it's a cracking piece of kit, isn't it? Like, we've, what we've been riding for an hour, a couple of hours now, doing some filming. You're crystal clear through my headset. Really, I, I, I don't think I've lost you once. Only when our uh, video guy tried to give you a call, because he got lost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, you've been crystal clear as we've been going, no matter how far away we've been from each other. Pairing the two up is a case of pressing a single button and there we are, talking to each other through the headsets and the sound quality has been excellent. And you know what, that's so important. <laughs> Not, I have so many times on bike trips, I've like met mates and we've stood in a car park for like half an hour trying to sync up damn headsets. It's just so, it's so irritating. It's delayed me so often in life. I love this big wheel. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Was it? Yeah, like because we did um, we did a test of intercoms a couple of years ago, didn't we? In Adventure Bike Rider magazine, yeah. Um, and I think I tested ten or twelve of them. And oh God, the, the amount of them that are really fiddly to use, particularly with gloves on. Now I'm only wearing summer gloves here, but um, but this big wheel, I, I, it's it's fine with big thick winter gloves as well. You just turn it. The buttons are big. Um, it's really yeah, it's a great bit of kit. Which um, I guess leads us into, as we're about to return to the uh, the busy traffic of Trafford and Avon, the perfect place to talk about what these bikes are like off-road. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. as, as we nip across the manicured lawns to, to get past the traffic. But no, I think, I think uh, let's be under no illusions, there is only going to be one winner in this category, isn't there? CNT uh, yeah. 1100. Yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> waiting for the reason why the NT is better than any other bike or road yeah. fanboy. No, um, I can't. I can't. I can't argue my way out of that one. I think, yeah, the Africa Twin, hands down. Uh, you, you, you tell us why, James. Well, do you know what? Before I tell you why. Um, it would be nice, to, it's good to stress that if you are late touring abroad, you need to go down a, a, a gravel road to get to your campsite or something like that. You know, you're going to be able to do it on the NT. It's not, it's not, you know, just because the pave, pavement ends doesn't mean suddenly the bike can't go forward. Just going to take a bit more care. Um, it's not the sort of bike that you would think, actually, I'm going to go and ride off road on purpose. You know, so it's it's going to be all right. But, um, mate, this Africa Twin, what can I say that, that hasn't been said before? It is just a mega bike off-road now before all you trail by people out there start shouting at me that it's big and heavy yes it's big and heavy and of course if you're riding off-road you're better off going for something smaller than lighter but if you're looking for an all-rounder so a bike that's gonna you know take you down to the alps in a short amount of time and then let you enjoy some of those military gravel roads mate the, the africa twin is sublime it really is 21 inch front wheel 18 inch rear nicely set up for off-road action spoke wheels so they're sturdy uh, the bike feels nice and balanced at low speeds lovely standing position um, and the engine's really nice and talky and it will just chug and chug up a hill like a tractor now i don't <laughs> some people say <laughs> things like that about adventure bikes they're agricultural they're not refined well you know who cares when you're off-road you're scrambling for grip and you're going up a steep incline this thing will Will just it will just trundle up that hill and um, I spent I spent a couple of days at the Honda Adventure Center um, with their um, with their team uh, Pat their head coach and Flash their instructor and the rest of the team and 
we had Bridgestone Battle XA X41s on, so 50-50 tyre. Uh, it was just insane what these bikes can do. Like, I'm a very, very average rider off-road. You know, I'm no Chris Birch. I enjoy it. I'll roll my wheels over pretty much everything, but I'll do it at my own pace, and I won't be towel sliding out, <laughs> things like that. Um, but the bike will just take you anywhere when you want to go. It really is a cracking piece of kit. Yeah, I've ridden the Africa Twin off-road at the Adventure Centre and it is amazing what that bike can do off-road. It feels like a far smaller and lighter bike when you're on it. The standard position is just the most comfortable and natural I've found on a bike, on an adventure bike. Um, there were a few that come close, like the Ducati Multistrada Enduro. Ooh, um, that's a big old bike to take off right there, isn't it? Yeah, but it, it just, do you know what I mean? It just feels so natural <laughs> to stand up. Um, but yeah, like you said, the NT will go down an easy gravel road or if there's count your campsites at the end of it or whatever. But if you're going to be off-roading and green laning is part of your life or you have aspirations to green lane, then you're not going to buy the NT 1100 to, to do that. <laughs> Basically, you'd be mad to, you know, Africa Twin wins the off-roader hands down. Nice, nice. Good to see you on board. Yeah, I'd <laughs> still buy the NT 1100. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Well, so next up, which uh, which kind of leads on nicely, actually, to uh, pillion carrying, because from our the last category, our last category, yeah, because from the perspective of you know, from a pillion's perspective, what's the most important thing is comfort. A lot of that for a pillion is provided by the comfort of the seat, um, grab rails, you know, the amount of space they've got down there, and. Uh, you know, whether the panniers stick into the back of the legs, etc. And neither of us have ridden on any either of these bikes as pillion, have we? I really hate riding pillion. <laughs> I'm gonna say, oh man, I, I cannot stand riding pillion on a motorbike. I mean, it just it, it brings out all my trust issues. James, off we go. As pillion on the back of the NT 1100. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I'm going to hold on to your shoulder. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, right. away, away. It's not your waist. What's it? What, what's it? <laughs> yeah. Let's start with what it's like from your perspective. Oh, then. it's a treat. It's wonderful. You know how much I like riding on the back of motorbikes. <laughs> oh god, I'm not in control. And I don't like it. Um, but that aside, that aside. Uh, first of all, getting on the bike. Um, yeah, it wasn't massively easy and straightforward, but it's easier than than mounting some of the bigger, taller adventure bikes. One, two, three. Oh, sorry. Hold it. Oh. I still had to swing my leg over the um, over the luggage and get on there, but yeah, being a lower bike, it is an easier experience getting on. And and actually on the back here, mate, I've I've got a fair amount of room. Um, the seat's kind of quite big and roomy. Firm. I'm not sure what I'd feel like in two or three hours' time, but um, but it's all right at the moment. And I've I've got a nice um, I've got a nice leg bend. You know, the, my legs almost at knees are almost at 90 degrees. Um, I, I, I immediately I'm not a big fan of the pegs. They're very slim little metal pegs. I don't feel as though I've got a lot of grip on them. So I think if I was a regular pillion rider, I'd be wanting to change them out. Um, but overall, it's 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 pretty roomy. Uh, the grab handles, they're a little close to my butt cheeks, I have to admit. <laughs> um, I could do with them a bit a little bit wider, wider apart, but you know, they're they're solid and I've got enough to hang on to. If I had I think if I had a, a top box to lean back against, I'd be a lot a lot happier. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of room. Do you find the panniers digging into your legs at all? Or? Oh no, I just felt you sc uh, stroking my calf there, so, <laughs> which makes me feel even more uncomfortable. But <laughs> yeah, no, actually the panniers are fine. Um, maybe because they are kind of plastic molded panniers rather than your sharper edged um, aluminium ones. Yeah. But I, I certainly don't feel like my legs are restricted in any way. It's quite yeah. a nice sort of almost armchair <laughs> position. It's, uh, it, is, it is a nice place to be, and I'm not too high up either. Uh, I know some bikes, the pillion seat is raised quite high. Um, Harley Davidson Pan America, amazing to uh, bike to tour on. I think it's a cracking machine, but uh, my wife was very tall on the back when we, uh, we've we done a bit of touring on it, and um, she did get a lot of wind blast in the face. Um, I don't think, I, we're not going that fast now, but I don't think I would experience that. Um, and it's a nice view. Sorry, I keep bumping you with my GoPro on my helmet. But uh, there's, you know, I've got a nice view. I'm not certainly not tucked in behind you. It's 
No, it's, it's a very well thought out, nicely uh, nicely designed place yeah. to be for a passenger. I just wish I was in the front seat. <laughs> well, I think from the, well, first of all, I think if I was going to be taking a pillion regularly, I would definitely opt for the version of the NT1100, which comes with the top box. Like yes. you said, you'd need a nice one there to lean back against. And that has a nice uh, uh, padded backrest for the pillion. So that's something I would absolutely get. But from a rider's perspective, I can definitely tell you're on the back. And I know you're, you, you're not as... You've got a few more pounds than my partner Naomi. What are you saying? Um, what are you saying? That steering does look a bit light up front, mate. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the steering has been quite light on the front. Um, the suspension is a bit spongy with you on, on the bike as well. And it doesn't feel as solid as, say, you know, I know it's a bike that's a lot more expensive than it is, but the, the BMW R1250GS Adventure, which we rode recently, I took Naomi on the back of that and you could barely tell she was there. Whereas on this, I think you'd be able to know that a pillion's there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, um, enough, you know, there's enough power and grunt in the engine to not really make any difference to the riding of the bike in that respect. But it just changes the handling of the bike quite considerably. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling a few bumps, bumps through uh, through my uh, my spine here. But do you know what? And that's the difference between kind of a bike that's going to set you back a fair few quid. Like you know, we mentioned the BMW RT or the Honda Goldwing, yeah, with their semi-active suspension, which you know, and the GS Adventure as well, which you mentioned, which automatically changes the uh, suspension settings um, depending on if you've got a pillion on the back or or the position of the rider. So you know, you spend a few more quid and you get that sort of technology. But I mean, I don't know. I think we could quite happily uh, ride through Tuscany, through a few vineyards on a sunny day on this bike. Yeah. Well, let's see how it compares to the Africa Twin, which uh, is, I think it's my turn to to ride as Pillion now, oh. unless, you, unless you'll happily let me oh. be the, the pilot. <laughs> Thank your pilot. Get me off. Get me off. <laughs> So the roles have been reversed, Bryn, you're on the back of the African Swing, how are you finding it? I, I can see why you don't like being a pillion now, I, I've got to admit, I'm not really enjoying it, the experience too much, but that's not necessarily down to the bike, that's more my own hatred of being a pillion as well. But I think from a, from a pillion's perspective, the first thing I know is getting on this bike. Uh, the panniers are so far forward that when you put your feet on the on the pillion pegs, actually trying to sort of maneuver your feet around to get on the bike is a bit of a pain. And uh, now that I'm sat down, I don't have much room for my feet. I have to have them sort of splayed outwards and the panniers are actually digging into my calves. So to be honest, for me, it's not, it's not the most comfortable position when you're riding with panniers. And if you're going to be tour touring two up, Obviously, you're going to be having panniers on there. Um, but, you know, there's there's a fair amount of room. I do feel quite close to you, James. <laughs> I'm feeling I'm both fairly well comforted and awkward right now. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's an interesting feeling, isn't it? Um, but the, the, the grab handles are nicely placed. They're big. Whoa, God. <laughs> they're big, they're chunky. There's a lot to grab onto. Um, and, you, you know, it's... I feel nice, nice and sort of high up and can see the whole road ahead. But yeah, I think for, for me, the, the main sort of qualm I have is with the, the panniers bag, bashing into my legs. Did, did you say um, you, you've been away with a pillion on the on the Africa Twin before? And Yeah, me and my wife have spent quite a bit of time on various Africa Twins actually over the years. Um, and she's not as bike. pretty as me, is she? But... No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would much prefer to go on tour to Italy with you than my beautiful wife. But um, yeah, she, uh, it was her complaint actually. She, you know, she felt relatively comfy on the back there compared to a lot of bikes she's ridden. But um, it was, she found that her legs dug quite deeply into that luggage because it is mounted too far forward like you're feeling now. And bless her, she had so many bruises on her legs by the end of the holiday. Um, it, it wasn't good. So, you know, and that's, I don't know if that's something that could be fixed relatively easily or I'm not sure. But um, it was certainly, certainly something that, that's not great for pillion travel. Yeah. And uh, you just you just grabbed a handful of brake there. How did it feel like breaking under 
heavy braking with such so much more weight on the back. Do you know what? You're as light as a fairy. You really are. No, Hardly wow. noticeable. Nah, to be honest with you, yeah, you can tell. You can tell there's uh, there's a fair bit of muscle that's sat behind me. Um, but actually, the, the handling isn't too bad. Um, often when you get uh, get luggage and a pillion on the back of the bike, the front end of bikes can go a bit light. But actually, this is surprisingly fine. Um, it does feel a little bit lighter. Not quite so stable at the front, but certainly not yeah, not something that I'm uncomfortable about. Uh, particularly at these low speeds we're doing, often the, the front can wiggle around. Have you had that feeling when you're coming off of a ferry? And uh, <laughs> you've got luggage on the back, a pillion on the back, everyone else is around you, and, uh, <laughs> and your front end wobbles. But this isn't too bad, actually, mate. Not too bad at all. I'd love for us to disappear off to the south of France, Tuscany, head over to the Alps and just have a thoroughly nice time two up together. What about it? Come on. Let's turn around and head off. It's all getting very romantic here, James. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel. <laughs> oh, mate, it's all right. I've got a magazine to do anyway. <laughs> the next issue of ABR needs, needs editing. <laughs> So after a great ride through the Cotswolds, what do we reckon to these two bikes? Which one would we choose? Which one would we spend our money on? Well, I think we need to score them. Absolutely. And as you've seen in the video, we ran through them through five categories, wasn't it? Just to recap quickly. Uh, commuter, commuter, weekend tourer, continental road tourer, off-roader, and the pillion carrier. So if we've got a, a point each for each category, yep. let's run through it. So as a commuter, who are you awarding your point to? The NT, the Africa Twin? My point is going to the NT. Oh, I'm going to have to say the same. I think, yeah, that dedicated road tour. For my commute, I'm, I'm giving it my point. 2-0 to no. the NT. Good. That's, uh, yeah, how I thought that would go. As a weekend tourer then, for me, no surprises, NT 11. Ah, your favourite bike. Absolutely. Yeah, NT. well, I, I understand why you've gone there. On paper, yes. Logically, yes. But if I've had a really busy day at work and I just want to go away for the weekend, put a huge smile on my face, it's got to be the Africa Twin. Yeah. I love the way it looks. I love the way it performs. I like the idea that I can go and do a few green lanes as well. So firmly, this has got my vote. Fair enough. Um, but what about Continental Road Tourer? Those big long distances. Tough choice. Do you know what? I, I would be happy taking either of these bikes across to Europe or on a on a longer distance tour and. You know, if I was going to stay mainly on the on the blacktop or entirely on the blacktop, I would be very happy on the NT1100. Sometimes when I go abroad, I like to you know hit a few trails. In that case, it would be the Africa Twin. Given that I'm becoming older and more sensible, I would have to go for the NT1100. You were making a lot of old man noises getting on off that bike. Yeah, and it's quite yeah. low as well. Yeah, I'm 31 now. It's uh, there we go. There we go. Way. You're getting old. Uh, for me, now I actually, if I go abroad, I tend to spend most of my time on the road. Mm -hmm. um, I tour with my wife, uh, Pillion Rider, and we, we, we travel and go and see things. So with that in mind, I'm going to take the off-road bike. <laughs> um, and again, I just, I, I think as I mentioned earlier on, my couple of weeks in the Alps each year is my highlight of my year. Yeah. And so I just want a bike that makes me feel alive. And while logically this is a brilliant machine, this bike pulls on my heartstrings. So okay. it's getting my vote. Don't hurt its feelings. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great bike. Okay. Just, I don't love it as much as the Africa Twin. As an off-roader. Off-roader. Is there really any point in talking about this? I think uh, the off-road version of the NT1100. The Africa Twin has to win my vote. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you phrase that. But yeah, you know, this is, this is it is a big bike, but it is a great big bike off-road. Yeah, and actually quite newbie friendly. You know, yeah, when, when I've, I've done off-road a course at the Honda Adventure Center, some, some guys and girls that had never ridden off-road before within 10, 15 minutes were stood up riding trails. Yeah. So it is, you know, it is big, but it is very good off-road. And yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's going to be the one to choose. Africa Twin all day long. Yeah. Yeah. Last one. Well, Pillion Carrier. We had a lovely time riding Pillion. We did, didn't we? Yeah. yeah very memorable. <laughs> yeah, it's the closest I've felt to you in a long time. <laughs> um, there seems to be a clear winner. Yeah, I think... It's got to be the NT1100, based on purely just the fact that you're going to have to have luggage on the Africa Twin if you're going with a pillion and you're touring with a pillion. If you're going abroad, yeah, or, or, or if you can, I guess, yeah, yeah touring. And just how far forward those panniers are, it's just and makes getting on and off the bike pretty tricky affair, and it's quite uncomfortable when you're on there. So, 
point for the NT for me. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with you. I, I didn't ride on the back of the Africa Twin, but I, I rode on the back of the NT, and it was actually quite a nice place to be once I got over my fear of being a pillion <laughs> rider. Um, but yeah, mate, if you're saying that you know it, it, it's uncomfortable on a lap of the estate round here, then yeah. three or four hours into a trip down French toll roads, that's it. It's, it's got to be the NT for there me. There we go. So where does that leave us with scores overall? So if I do my math correctly, that leaves us at six points for the NT, four points for the Africa Twin. So clearly the Africa Twin is the better bike. <laughs> it depends what you want to do with the bike as to which is the best for you. They're both brilliant machines. They both have some flaws, but for the most part, they're exceptional yeah. on the road and, and very good off it. Um, you won't be disappointed with the NT. Though. No, and you'll have a wonderful time on the Africa Twin. So anyway, before we round off the end of the video, just want to say a massive, massive thank you again to Senna, who sponsored this video and uh, allowed us to use the Senna Spider ST1 headsets to talk to each other as we were doing the reviews. Oh, and it's been a cracking bit of kit all day, hasn't it? Absolutely, it's been, yeah. you know, the, 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 the sound has been crystal clear. Um, it's been easy to use. And yeah, it really is a quality bit of kit that I'm going to be leaving on my helmet, hopefully, if they don't want it back. <laughs>